So I've been running that light bar and those LED pods for a year or two now on these uh, light up switches. And they work great. The only disadvantage is if you're running them late at night on a road, you have to reach down and flip them off real quick when you come across traffic, which is, you know, a safety hazard for you as well as the other person if you're slow to flip the switch. And so that uh, clip I just showed you was my latest project. I replaced those light up switches with these single pole double throw uh, three position switches. And they allowed me to run those lights with the high beams or independently. So I'm going to show you what I did there uh, in this video. So the way I've got it wired up is this all the way up is on. That's completely off. And then down in position number one is on with the high beams. And I've got one switch for the light bar and one for the pods. I'm not going to go very deep into wiring because there's a write-up in a video on just about every truck or car or motorcycle dirt bike forum on how to correctly hook up lights or a light bar with a relay and a switch. But I did want to touch on the two different types of switches that I have used. This is the old one. It's an LED light up single pole, single throw on off switch. You'll see it's got three contacts. One goes to the ground. One goes to your uh, switch's power, which usually comes from the battery. And then the middle one here goes to your relay. If you wired it up with a relay, that'll trigger your relay to come on. If you didn't use a relay, that'll go directly to your lights, but you should always use a relay, as any good write-up will tell you. And this is the new kind, single-pole double-throw switch I installed. It is referred to as an on, off, on switch, because those are the positions. And it also has three contacts. And on this switch, again, your middle contact there will go to the uh, input terminal of the relay, and... Like I said, that diagram can be found anywhere on the internet. But then uh, for this one, you're going to have one contact that's going to go to your high beam trigger wire if you want to trigger it from the high beams. And then the other contact is going to come straight from, that's going to be just straight switch power like the other one. So as it worked on the vehicle, when I've got it down here, this one comes from the high beam trigger. When it's on here, it just runs straight through the switch power and turns the light on independently. So now we're going to show you, now I'm going to show you a little bit of how I uh, wired it up. And this is one of those things where there's a few different ways to do it. And this is the way I do it. It's not necessarily how you should do it. And you should always check the relevant wiring diagrams for your vehicle because colors, codes, all that might not be the same. So like I said, I'm not going to pull a whole bunch of paneling off to show you the wiring, but I do want to focus on this yellow wire, which is underneath my steering column. If you'll notice that yellow wire is connected using a T-tap, which is just the way I chose to do it. If you've got the room to splice it correctly, I definitely recommend doing that. But it is connected into another yellow wire, which comes down from here. And the significance of that yellow wire it's connected to is that is the high beam trigger wire coming from the multifunction switch. So if you're going to do this, you'll want to post on a forum or Google for your vehicle wiring diagram and see if you can find the high beam trigger wire coming from the multifunction switch and you want to tap into it. And then from there that wire goes behind here behind this panel and there it is correctly spliced into two ends because I have two switches and that goes into one of these posts on the switch. And so that is one of your positions. So when it's in that position and you pull the high beam lever it will trigger from the power going through there. And it's important to note that that's not actually, that wire, the high beam wire is not actually powering your lights or your light bar. It's just acting as a trigger because you don't want to send that much power through that factory wire in most cases. And there is another way of doing it that's fairly common that I'll show you right now. I chose to do it this way for simplicity of wiring, but the other way works just fine as well. Now you're not going to be able to see this very well, but you'll hopefully be able to get the gist of what I'm trying to show you. That bundle of wire loom right there, right there, is the bundle going straight into my headlights. And what sometimes people will do is they'll slice that tape and loom and find the high beam wire from the headlights and connect that directly to the light. Oftentimes they use that if they don't want to switch and they just want the light to be on whenever the high beam is triggered. And I... So that sums up the lights and high beams part of the video, but I wanted to draw a little bit of attention to this switch here 
and just say that this method, this is also a single pole double throw switch, can be used for a backup camera. I've got a backup camera that I put on this truck and one of these poles on that switch is wired to the reverse trigger which performs the same way as the high beam does when you pull the uh, column shifter down into reverse. I tapped into the wire running in the floorboard and that will turn the backup camera on only when I'm going backwards. Then when I flip it this way I've got it coming from a 12 volt hot source and so I can watch the camera going down the road. So I hope this video has been fun and entertaining and hopefully helpful to somebody that's trying to do this. I enjoyed making the video and enjoyed wiring it up. Always enjoy projects working outside and on my vehicle. So thanks for watching.